Hi, perhaps you recognize me. It's your favorite president. We will decide who comes to this country and the circumstances in which they come. I mean, <laughs> you, know. you know you want to ban our national flags, but we're going to wave you goodbye. What does confrontational mean? It means you fight for what you believe. Enough was enough! And I said, let Trumpomania run wild, brother! It is not merely our privilege to be strong, it is our duty to be strong. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Commanding the Narrative. My name is Stephen Tripp, joined by me. Oh, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Here we are. <laughs> joined by Mr. Paul Vallejo. How are you going Doing today, great. Paul? Yeah, excited. We've had a big, big uh, last few days, haven't we? Yes, we have. It was yeah. great, though. Uh, so, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, if you are watching on Facebook and, and Rumble, you're not watching on YouTube because we're banned on YouTube, thanks to Mr. Tony Nicolick and the Draconian uh, I didn't hear YouTube. about that. Yeah. Wow. Well, every time we have him on, he, they ban us for medical <laughs> misinformation. Right. Right. And of course, I mean, you heard about that the uh, YouTube uh, CEO died of cancer a couple of oh, weeks really? ago. Did he really? She. Yeah. Susan yeah. W. Someone. She res- was responsible for... A lot of the sen- YouTube censorship, and um, you know, and then anything that talked bad about the vaccines and, yeah. and the connection. It, it reminds me of a guy that I used to follow, Doctor jo- Joel Wallach. Joel Wallach? I might, be, I might be getting that wrong. Uh, he was a nutritionist, mm-hmm. and and he wrote a book called "Dead Doctors Don't Lie" because mm. he would go through and find all the the obituaries and the, the dead doctors, and he, he tallied them all up, the ages, and found that they had an average life of about fifty seven. So saying doctors are believing their own stuff and then dying early. Yeah. Well, I guess that's um, you'd probably want the advice from the the doctors that didn't. <laughs> and also <laughs> they the, were ninety years old. <laughs> and, and also the YouTube uh, the YouTube CEOs that uh, don't follow their own advice don't maybe yeah. don't die as early. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if, uh, if anyone wants to um, uh, support us at Commanding the Narrative, please head to Buy Me a Coffee. Uh, and you can throw us uh, a few dollars there. It helps to pay for the live stream, helps to pay for the website and a few other things. And also gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling inside, which is very important. Uh, so please head to buy me a coffee. If you'd like to keep up to date with everything that we're doing, please head to commandingthenarrative.com. It's the best way for you to keep up to date with all the podcasts, articles, events, whatever it might be that I'm doing, Adam's doing. Uh, all of us are doing really. Uh, just hit the sign up button in the top right hand corner, and you'll get a weekly uh, newsletter. And uh, it's as I said, don't rely on social media, don't rely on YouTube or Facebook or any of these platforms. Even though we're on there, I mean, we have to be on there, but yeah, we want to try and get away from them as best we can. And this way is a good way just uh, to get an email once a week in your in your inbox. So please sign up to that. Uh, also, uh, upcoming soon, Paul, you're going to be part of this as well, as awesome. you were last time in June when we had it at DY, the Environment and Energy Forum. It's happening at the Guildford Leagues Club on September 29, between 1 and 5 p.m. Paul will be hosting the panel on nuclear energy. We have uh, Dr. Mark Ho locked in for that at the moment and hopefully some big names to be announced soon. But already announced, we have Matthew Camanzuli, uh, who was a former New South Wales Liberal State Executive member, very outspoken should be interesting to hear from Matthew. Sandra Burke, who's the new uh, Advanced Australia spokeswoman. Nick Cater from uh, ADH TV, the and he writes for The Australian as well. Craig Kelly will be there. Steve Crystal will be there. Grant Piper, who was down in Oberon with us on the weekend, the chairman of the National Rational Energy Network, will be speaking uh, on behalf of rural communities. Mr. Kevin Lockray, uh, if you follow this po- podcast, you'll know all about Kevin. Uh, so he'll be there. Wade Northhausen, who we've interviewed as well. Uh, who's a great speaker, and of course, Paul and myself will be there. And uh, hopefully, over the next coming days and weeks, we'll be announcing some big, big names uh, also. So I love that lineup. It should These be great good. people. The last one was excellent. So uh, you know, eighty, you know, eighty H TV will be there covering it as well. But uh, get your tickets. Be there in person. It should be a big event. And the significance of it is that it's in uh, uh, Chris Bowen's electorate. Ooh, awesome. So we need to, we bring really it. need, we really need to bring get it. a big crowd. If you can make it, please do so. We want to make a statement to Chris Bowen and say, Hey, we're not happy with uh, all the policies and rubbish. That, in, you know. in the heart of darkness. <laughs> That's right. Um, 
Finally, uh, before we before we uh, kick into the main event today, uh, I want to let you know about the uh, Oberon Symposium that we were uh, having down in Oberon uh, over the weekend. Paul, you gave a, a speech on nuclear energy, which we may discuss today if we can get to it. Yep. I know it was this podcast was meant to be about that, but a lot of things have come up, so we try world. we try and stay topical. But head to Chris Coveries uh, on Facebook, and he's got it up up. Online now, we had Professor Ian Plymer, Dr. Alan Moran, a uh, whole bunch of great speakers. A lot of feedback from the audience was, was that it was fantastic and they really enjoyed it. They really enjoyed the information. It was almost a bit of an information overload, but that's why we've got this recording. You can go back and, and scroll through it at your own time and and uh, and see what we did down in Oberon. It was really dense. I was really impressed with the speakers. Yeah, Doctor Plymer is uh, Professor Plymer. Yeah, is incredible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's always amazing. Yeah, he is. He's yeah, quite something. And so were you, Paul. I mean, I, I think you gave your best. Oh, thank you, effort. thank I mean, you. I, 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 I appreciate it. I, I, it seemed like it flowed well. It was well received. You know, you never know how you're received because you're on the other side of the equation. But uh, but the feedback was good, and, and yeah. I was grateful to be there. And look, those people are facing some. It's terrible. Yeah. It's really terrible what what's being put to them, and 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 for some for something that makes a negative difference to the environment, hmm. it, it it's really it's really heartbreaking, and it's it's something that, you know, when people realize what's being done, I think they they have to wake up, they have to stand up, they have to do what they can. How do you feel going to a place like Oberon and seeing the local community and how they're affected by a, a wind turbine project? And you live here in uh, Raringa in a teal electorate surrounded by teals who, who are the ones pushing this sort of stuff. How does that make you feel? The, 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 hypo- the hypocrisy is, 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 is terrible. You know, Zali is the one who's one of the people really pushing this. Um, it makes no sense for uh, Australian working families. It makes no sense for our manufacturer, for our, for our economy. It no- makes n- not only no sense, but it's, it'll destroy our, our, our band and our rural communities. Oh. And then she says, well, yeah, I want this. But somewhere else, yeah, you know, somewhere else problem, yeah. and it, it's, um, it is. Have you ever heard the term champagne socialist? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's very, you know, that it is the teal version of champagne socialism. You know, the 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 costs can be over there. You know, with the the people who can, you know, metaphorically eat cake and or or, or the the windmill chips off, you know, off of their food. Hmm. And uh, you know, and here I'll be, you know, in Warringah, uh, surrounded by natural beauty, untouched by the nonsense and the travesty of of everything that's happening. Is the right can't get its act together, so. Uh, I had a look last night at the uh, council election that's coming up here in the Northern Beaches, and we know that the Liberal Party was unable to nominate for that. Yeah. So the choices are uh, in t- in an independent team, which is basically the Teals. So that the the it's lady that ran, but- yeah, the lady that ran for the state election for the Teals is running for council now. So, I mean, I know you're in a different ward, but that's what I've got to choose for from in Kelko. Then there's the Greens, and then there is Labor. Yeah, it would nice. It would be nice to have a competent, well-spoken, well-informed opposition to this nonsense, yeah. wouldn't it be? It would be nice. It would be nice. It would be very nice. But yeah. look, America leads the way in a lot of ways, and they, sometimes for better or worse. For better or worse, a lot of people say that Australia, uh, at least politically, is five, ten years behind what's happening in America. Mm. I look at America and I see some good signs. I see some bad signs too. But there's some. There's some hope there. There is. So let's. Let's have a look at what's happened recently. Now, when did this happen? Was this like yesterday? I think or the- it was yesterday or the day before. Yeah. I just saw it last night. Okay. And I have to say, you know, for, for, for someone who's been politically homeless for a long time uh, and, uh, you know, where, where the Uniparty, basically, based on what we're talking about here in, in, in our area, mm. there are no good choices sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, to, to be politically homeless, to know that the Uniparty pulls the strings of both parties, whether it be for wars or for pharmaceuticals or for big agriculture at the expense of our health, and then to finally have... The, the 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 good pe- good people line up and 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 speak out against those things mm-hmm. i was moved well let's show what we're talking about <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, one thing about you Americans, Paul, you know how to put on a show, right? <laughs> and that's one thing that, yeah, the 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 entertainers, Trump, you know, they can't come media and and entertainment and real estate. Uh, they 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 do have uh, they they do have that. But um, you know, this this is such a historic moment. There are times in in political history where major wings of parties switch sides. So for instance, you know, the African Americans all voted for uh, Lincoln, hmm. uh, you know, the Republican party for, for decades, it, the, it was, it was, they had a lock on, on that demographic, yeah. um, you know, the unions on, you know, on one side, but then when you came to the civil rights movement, when it came to the new deal, then the, the, the black vote switched absolutely other way in the 90 plus percentile. So every now and then you have these major realignments. And this is an absolutely critical one because you have, you know, the Kennedy family uh, has been Democrat forever. Hmm. Uh, and a lot of R RFK Jr.'s families is still in that camp. But what he represents, he's pulling a lot of people with him uh, from from uh, the, the COVID skeptics, yep. you know, people like Pierre Corey. What did he call himself? A cover to cover New York Times reader. Mm. Brett Weinstein, you know, it was one of the most progressive colleges in the United States. And a lot of people like them you know, uh, that, that have now come to realize that the party that they, that, that they grew up with is one of pro war, pro big pharma, pro censorship. Uh, and you know, Tulsi Gabbard is another one who's, who's left the party. And, um, and, and you also then. Uh, on the other side, have some woke Republicans who are, are leaving the Republican Party and, you know, the never Trumpers. Uh, oh, and the neocons, of course, Liz Cheney, Mitt Romney. So you, you have this massive realignment. But the great thing is, from my point of view, there's finally someone to support. And, um, you know, and it's not to say that I support a person. I support a set of policies. And 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 this is this is this is lining up in a way that I, I'm perf personally moved. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you, how, what, what was your reaction as, a, as an American uh, seeing this? So how, do, how did you react personally? Yeah, this is, so, you know, one of the things I, I didn't realize until 2020, I mean, is, is just how bad things have gotten, mm. you know, uh, the, 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 what are the fundamental things that, that has made a country successful? Uh, I used to teach a, a course on political ideologies, uh, called political sociology, and you, you know, you really got into the different ideologies, what they think, what they value, what they care, uh, what they care about. There's a um, professor, uh, Hi um, Heider, I think his name is, who wrote a book about this. And, uh, you know, what are the different values that separate the parties? You know, so from my point of view, uh, you know, this, this um, how do I feel about it? You know, because we have been you know, you and I, we, we've experienced this. We've experienced censorship. We've experienced mandatory vaccination, regardless of informed consent. Um, you know, the, the people, when we, you've been banned off of YouTube, mm -hmm. right? I mean, these things are detrimental to the, to the foundations of what makes Western society great. Yep. You know, there's a reason why uh, the Western world succeeded uniquely in terms of, you know, the industrial revolution, uh, you know, the uh, free, free thought, pre, free publications, free speech, the Magna Carta, you know, these things are foundational to our prosperity and mm. they are being attacked. They say evil thrives when good men do nothing. Yeah. I think the significance of this is we're seeing some good men now firstly stand up I think in 2016 it was just Trump. What's filled me with a lot of hope is now I look at the presidential. A few months ago, when they, were, they had the presidential race, especially for the Republican side, you had Trump, you had uh, Reve uh, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, mm -hmm. you had uh, Don, um, Ron DeSantis. Yep. You had some Nikki good people. Haley. Oh, well, not, no, not, no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, I didn't. Before not, you said good people, I, 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 I was throwing that in just to the list. But not no. Nikki Haley. No, no, no. Good, be, good people. That uh, so you didn't just have to rely on Trump anymore. That now that Trump's risen, mm -hmm. other people have have stepped up as well. And uh, you know, one of the ones that I was really getting behind was Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Oh, absolutely. To the point where, uh, you know, I thought. Trump was a good president, and I, and I supported a lot of, of what he he did. But I was leaning more, and I know I can't vote in the American mm -hmm. election, but I was leaning more towards supporting RFK Jr. To see them on stage together, yep. unified, 
obviously, as RFK said, they, they're still going to disagree on some issues and Definitely. they'll disagree passionately. But they've they've looked at uh, the issues that that they agree on and they, they've said, let's come together, let's 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 fix this place and let's make America healthy again yeah. was one of the well. Yes, yes. Um, so if you could get uh, six, 640 ready, yeah. one of the key things uh, about this, um, you know, it's about priorities because the things they disagree with, yeah, okay, they're important, but some of the absolutely fundamental precepts uh, are, are at stake here. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the thing is, this is really interesting because you have, you know, uh, Bobby Kennedy is, you know, was considered a very left-wing Democrat. Yeah. And he is... From from a left wing Democrat in the belly of the beast, right? And in, in, in Trump's uh, and 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 this is how he's introduced, and this is how the crowd reacts to him because they they know that this is about some fundamental properties that join these two men. Yeah. yeah. I can only tell you I've known him a long time. We've been a little bit on the opposite side of the equation, but I will say this: he is a brilliant. I still, I still think, think of him, of him as young. young. He's not that young. young. I always I call always him young, young, but he's not he's that, that young. young. But he is but a, he is phenomenal a phenomenal person, person, a phenomenal man who man loves, who the, loves people the people of this country as much as anybody can love the people of this country. So, Bobby, please say a few words. So that's how Trump introduced him. But the reaction is one thing I want to... Oh, you want to watch the Because this is really important. How is a left-wing Democrat received on stage. You know, Tulsi Gabbard, when she came to speak at uh, the Republican National Committee, uh, you know, uh, like they, they were asking, like, should we get some extra security up there? You know, like she she wasn't sure she, how she would be received, but she was adored, um, you know, because I, I think that the people in the Republican Party know how serious this is and they know how, who, who who's, you know, yeah, uh, my sense of things. Uh, let's see the let's, reaction, if yeah. that's right. Thank you. Thank you, President Trump. Thank you. Yeah. He, he's my he's my question. You're saying that the Republicans are, are cha- cheering for him, yeah. But are the people that are supporting Trump really Republicans, or are they just everyday people that want someone to stand up and represent them? So, so this is where it gets to the different wings of each party mm-hmm. and which wings have changed. So the Republicans and Democrats, the Republicans are a con- conglomeration of of an evangelical wing, a, a free, a small government uh, wing. Uh, a libertarian wing, um, a business wing, um, uh, and uh, also, you know, constitutional, you know, uh, constitutionalists. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, the, the, the people cheering for, 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 for Kennedy, um, these are people who have seen uh, a lot of the constitutional liberties under attack. Now, um, especially free speech. So when, if you, if you, if we kind of can queue up uh, 10, 1046, or actually 906. 906, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he gets into a set of values that uh, that that these share. The, the Democrats, you know, have the, have their own, and we'll talk about uh, that as well, like what, what are the different groups inside the Democrat Party. Mm. But there are uh, plenty of people who... Um, well, and who's left the, the 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 Republican Party is the neoconservatives. They're gone. Liz Liz Cheney, uh, George W. Bush, um, uh, and and uh, and and who was the the hag that I just mentioned? Uh, uh, Nikki Haley. That's the one. Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know the deep the deep staters. Uh, they're 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 running r- running from these two as far as fast as they can go. Yeah. So this this massive me- realignment. Um, you know, from from two people who's who in the no assassination attempts, yeah, uh, by um, by some shadowy forces, and um, yeah, let's 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 see how uh, how he spe- he speaks about it. That bind us together, and one of the issues that he talked about was having safe food and ending the chronic disease epidemic. <laughs> Thank you. 
our, our, our children, children are now the unhealthiest, unhealthiest sickest, children sickest children in the world. In the world. Don't you Don't want, you want healthy, healthy children? children? Yes. And, and don't, and you, don't want you want the chemicals, the chemicals out of our food? Yes. And don't, and you, don't you want, want the regulatory agencies to be free, free from corporate, from corporate corruption? corruption? Yes. Hmm. And that's and what that's President, what President Trump, Trump told me that he wanted. He, he also he told me. Told me. And he wanted, he wanted to end the grip of the neocons on U.S. U.S. policy. Hell yes. He said he, he said didn't want any more $200 trillion, 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 trillion dollar wars in Ukraine, Ukraine that we could we use that money back, back here in the United, United States. States. Absolutely. And the safest, the the, the best, best way to build a safe America, America is to is rebuild, rebuild our industrial, industrial base, base and, and rebuild the middle class, class in this country. This country. And, don't and don't you want, want a president, president who's going to get us out of the wars and who's going to rebuild the middle class in this country? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I got emotional when I, if, if you, I got emotional when I was watching this, and he goes on into a set of things you know, that uh, it, kind of a cadence of, don't you want this? Don't you want this? And I was, at each one, I was like, absolutely, hell yes, because can't wait. You're not only dying for someone to finally say these things, yep. but you, but he's someone that's been fighting this battle for a long time. That's right. And you know he's dedicated his yep. life to it. You know he's going to go after it. Yep. So there's a belief there as well. Not only is he saying it, you believe that he's going to actually do something about yep. it. Yep. And Trump, look, I mean, it looks like Trump's going to let him. Yeah, well, not just let him, but they said they, they talked about their agreement on these fundamental issues. And each of these things Kennedy is saying, you know, don't you don't you want this? Don't you want that? And and this is the, you know, this is, uh, if do you mind kind of rolling this a little bit more? Yeah, we, we're only meant to play 30 second clips. Copy, like, well, what, if, what if we sort of talk over it? Uh, that, well, that, we can that, stop. We can stop it and then discuss it, but we can't let it play. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you want to keep that going? Uh, yeah, a little bit because each of these issues, I think it's really key to understand that these are common between both the Kennedy Democrats and and the the Republicans, okay. the ones that are still remaining. All right. And he told me that he wanted to end the censorship. Because yes. the whole See, basis mm. of American democracy is the free flow of information. And we know we'll get you the back on YouTube, that Steve. Can silence <laughs> yeah, seriously, yeah. That's has true. license for any kind of atrocity. And can you think no of jab, any no time job. that you can look back in history and say that the people who were censoring were the good guys? They're always the bad guys. Because it's because always, always the first, first step down that down slippery, slippery slope to totalitarianism. You lost your job, didn't you? I did. I did lose my job. Yeah. I mean, we've lost. A, we've lost a lot, but we've gained a lot as well. But I mean, to to think that. I mean, this censorship thing's a big deal. Huge. Like, it's massive. Like Absolutely the, foundation. How did we go down this slippery slope and no one's really saying anything about it? It's, it, it was one of the fundamental principles of our whole society. Well, this gets into echo chamber. That, how, that one of the ways that they've manipulated good people to be okay with censorship is to call misinformation dangerous, violent, hate speech. See, that, 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 that the term hate speech, I can't tell you how much I hate hate speech. Yeah. You know, th this is, this is, this is a way to try to just one of, that's one of the ways that they go after your fundamental freedoms is to associate it with something or a person that, 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 that is hard to defend, mm. you know? So, so like for instance, what they did with, with, uh, you know, what they did to Alex Jones, love him, hate him, you know, whatever you think about him. If you look at, what the legal mechanisms they did to take away his rights to defend himself, they were absolutely horrible. It should, it can happen to no one or, or the, or the people who, you know, January 6th that ended up uh, in jail without a trial. These are things that should happen to no one, but they try to put things, they, they try to find the least sympathetic figures, the ones that their side at least uh, will be okay if, if they are locked and throw one away to key without, without proper representation or without a trial. And, and then, you know, 
keep the narrative going and 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 having having fundamentally destroyed the foundational freedoms. One of the things that RFK said that uh, was about um, uh, Kamala Harris and uh, how the Democrats have fabricated this uh, so seemingly all this support that's behind her. And they're saying, you know, you look, look at some of the polls and it looks like they're, you know, Trump and her are neck and neck and all this. I mean, she was completely and utterly despised by a lot of people before she, you yeah. know, was the nominee. Now apparently everyone's behind her. Uh, for for people watching Trump and Bobby Kennedy on stage, is this going to move the dial? Do you think, do you think this will sway? It, I think the, it will. Yeah. Yeah, I think it will make a difference because, you know, there, there's a couple of things. He, he said uh, he if you live in a blue state, I'm going to keep my name on the ballot. Go ahead and vote for me. Mm. If he gets above five percent, then I think he gets some campaign uh, funds, okay. right, for his 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 organization, for his party. But in the battleground states where it's key, I think he's taking his name off, or at least telling people to to vote for Trump. Yeah, well, where where, where it's, he could be a spoiler. Yep, that's right. where he's going to remove yep. himself. And, and 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 there are a lot of people. See, the other thing is, so it's not just removing himself from the ballot, but people who are seeing this alignment. So if you look at actually some of uh, my COVID heroes, uh, Ryan Cole, Pierre Corey, Chris Martinson, right? Mm-hmm. These are people who are Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, and now, now you know, because in my view. The, the worst, the thing that I always had a hard time, they, that I have a hard time forgiving Trump for is Operation Warp Speed, right? You know, I now, agree. he yep. keeps saying, well, I didn't mandate it. And I, yeah, okay, I agree with you. The person who mandated it, who, who forced it on our armed forces, who, who put it on the CDC children's schedule, that is beyond unforgivable. I have a hard time, you know, with the fact that Trump can't see what he did with Operation Warp Speed. And there are, but now that he's up on stage with Kennedy... Um, and they're agreeing on these, uh, the, a lot of this platform, he will absorb that voting block. Um, and, and he, he goes over in the next couple, in the next minute or two, a couple other major platforms that, that I think will draw, uh, people into, into the Trump camp. And don't you want a president who's going to protect America's freedoms? <laughs> And who is going to protect us against totalitarianism? Yeah, and that's what the Republicans and th- I think we're up against is totalitarianism. Again, don't you want a safe environment for your children? He's an environmentalist, and oh, you want to oh, you want to know that the food that you're feeding them is not filled with chemicals that are going to give them cancer and chronic disease. Yes. And don't you want a president that's going to make America healthy again? <laughs> See, that's awesome. That is awesome. All right, let's skip ahead because, um, look. Uh, Bobby Kennedy is a political animal. He's he's been in. I mean, I think he said that he first attended his first Democrat convention when he was six years old. Yeah. His his father uh, was uh, you know run, running for president. He yep. was the attorney general. Yep. Uh, obviously, his uncle was president. So he he's been in the Democrat Party a long time. So he's he's no fool when it comes to politics. So if he's going to make this agreement with Trump, he's going to want something out of it politically. So you would assume that he would want a a position in Trump's, uh, and, and I hope he gets it. Yeah. And, and, and I would expect he will. Yeah. Well, here's, here's the question. I was watching a podcast with, um, Patrick, Bet David and also Brett Weinstein mm. and Patrick, Bet David was, uh, saying, does Trump, uh, make Bobby Kennedy the head of the CIA or is it more of a health side of things? And, uh, something interesting that Brett Weinstein said was like, no, the CIA one as, as, Amazing as that would be, you know, as, as full circle as as things would become, um, he won't really be very effective there because a lot of the stuff that the CIA, CIA is doing that's off the record, he won't be able to get access to. Yeah, it's better off being like an attorney general or something like that. I, I saw uh, Brett Weinstein's uh, take on that on Twitter, and uh, and I agree with him. You need an outside a- agency with subpoena power. Mm-hmm. Uh, just being the head. Uh, of the CIA, 
a i i care too much about rfk junior to 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 want him to show up in langley every work day <laughs> you know go to the how, how do you think of the, go to the office cafeteria yeah, no 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 absolutely not he'd have to bring you know? his own packed lunches he'd have to bring more than that yeah. you know so absolutely you know ag uh, the attorney general with subpoena power but absolutely not the head of the cia i agree yeah okay well that's going to be an interesting an interesting thing uh, it's yeah it will how does this uh play out here in australia because we're, we're facing the same issues yeah. same with yeah. same with the uk yeah. you you're talking about this political realignment look what happened in the uk with uh the rise of reform uk and they only had 6 weeks to campaign i mean i, I from what i've heard they had a whole strategy laid out, and uh, uh, um, Rishi Sunak um, calling an early election really got them off off, mm-hmm. off kilter. But they still managed to get some traction. They, you know, there's an alignment happening there. Are we going to see something like that here? Yeah. So I'm going to echo Brett Weinstein again, and one of the things he talks about is zero is a special number, right? If you have uh, the narrative being controlled by and throughout all the media organizations then you have no place else to get the counter narrative, right? And so they can maintain the illusion really effectively. But if you have one place, one cable news channel, one, you know, that, that's why you're getting kicked off of YouTube is because yeah. they're trying to maintain the narrative. If the United States has Trump and Kennedy, uh, they are not going to, you know, all these, all these uh, attempts at censorship, you know, the, 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 the CEO of Telegram just got arrested in Paris yesterday. Really? You didn't hear about, didn't hear about that? No, I didn't. Just, just yesterday. What for? Who knows what? It doesn't matter, you know. But you know, for whatever bullshit they will come up with, and you know, I think uh, some people are talking. Hey, Elon, do not travel to Europe, right? Because you know, so 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 yeah, the the CEO of Telegram uh, is is now under arrest in Paris for whatever bullshit the deep state wants to arrest him for. Yeah, you know. So um, the. Uh, so 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 if this happened, I, I think the House of Cards falls because the narrative is is transparently false to anyone who actually tries to look into it. The only reason it exists, the only reason this House of Cards exists, net zero policy, we talked about how absolutely transparently nonsense it is, uh, you know, in terms of and the benefits versus the costs. Mm. That exists because the media narrative exists, and the media narrative exists because – all through the Western world, it's controlled widely. Yeah. Okay. So where, where's the leadership going? I mean, I think that's the biggest problem here. We don't have that that one leader to first pop up and, and push back. Uh, I, I did hear today that uh, Sen- Senator Jared Rennick has resigned from the Liberal Party and is going to be starting his own party called People First. Look, I don't know how successful he will be with that. Godspeed. I, yeah, all I can say. I, I tend to think he's going to need a few recruits to get really noticed. He's going to need some other people jumping on the bandwagon. But there's plenty of those people around. I mean, there's yeah. plenty of people that have been pushed out of the the Liberal Party, yeah. just like he has. Yeah, the the uh, it'll be a big break. You know, the, a big break is going to be the media narrative. And I do think that Australia, if the media narrative breaks hard because of what happens in the United States. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be really hard to maintain that narrative control here. And mm-hmm. I think then it, it'll be an impetus to change. On the other hand, if it goes the other way, um, yeah, then find a bolt hole. <laughs> so you wanted to talk about the ideological uh, t- Turing test? Yeah, ideological Turing test. So, um, so first of all, Steve, do you know what the Turing test is? No, you need to explain this right. to me. So the Turing test is uh, in a computer. So it comes from uh, Turing, who was the uh, person that, uh, who invented the first computer for the, in World War II to try to decode the Nazis' uh, machine, yeah. uh, cryptology machine. The and enigma, was it the Enigma? The Enigma machine. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Uh, and um, And so the Turing test is, the idea is, how do you know you're not talking to a computer, right? You know, you talk to Siri, um, you know, is Siri or AI or ChatGPT or maybe even a person uh, or an Android uh, capable of fooling you? Mm. Uh, like, how long does it take to say, ah, this is a computer, and, you know? Um, and so that's what the Turing test is. Can the computer fool uh, you into believing it's human? Now, the ideological Turing test is, can you fool someone in believing that you are politically on their side. So mm-hmm. would you have the ability to answer a set of questions like a teal? 
or like a labor vote. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, um, uh, what the ideological Turing test is, you know, uh, you, you pretty much know what I think of Trump Kennedy at this point. Um, and, uh, uh, and you know what, what side I'm on now, would I have the ability to, um, to fool you into believing that, uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Kamala, uh, Harris supporter. So, uh, what, what I'm going to do is if, if for fun, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of change vibes. Yep. I'm going to transform. <laughs> right. And then I'm, I'm going to impersonate okay. uh, a, a Harris supporter. Okay. Let's okay? do it. We'll see how we go. Oh, well, 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 uh, Paul's going to uh, do a little, um, a change of uh, attire. I'm going to let you know how you can also change your attire. Please head to xcandidates.tshirts.net and you can get one of our t-shirts, whether it be a commanding the narrative t-shirt or X candidates t-shirt. Again, it's another way that you can support us and, uh, and help us pay for the live streams and uh, also the website. Those things are not, uh, not free. So uh, it's, it's just a good way of helping us to keep going. And as I said, uh, if you want to uh, sign up to everything that we are doing, uh, head to commandingthenarrative.com. Uh, we know we were just talking about the censorship and everything like that. And, uh, and, and, you know, soon we might not have Facebooks. We might not have Instagram. We might not, we, do, we don't currently have YouTube. So if you want to keep up to date with all our interviews and hear our great speakers and, and everything, um, hit the sign up button and, uh, and uh, keep up to date. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, Steve. What are you meant to be? <laughs> oh, my name is Che. Che. Yeah. yeah. Che, che, che. Che for Che Guevara. Okay. Che. Where did you even get that T-shirt from? Workers what? of the World in the Night. Why do you baby. even have that T-shirt? Workers of the World. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, I'm Che. My, my pronouns are hey, you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, well, I was old, Harris, I, Harris 2024. I was New South Wales education, um, system educator. I don't know what a pronoun is. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I kind of don't, okay. I, I, you know, I get confused with my pronouns. Sometimes I change. You okay. Know? So how do you feel about the Democrat party at the moment? Oh, I'm so psyched. This is, this is hope and change writ large. Hmm. The most important thing is we, we, we have to make sure that the orange man never gets anywhere close to power again. But why? Well, because, you know, obviously he's a racist and a misogynist and he lies all the yeah, time. Yeah. And, you know, we, we need the first woman president and person of color, you know, first. And, and this is this is our time. And, wh- and why is that significant to have a president that's a woman of color and also a woman? Well, you know, diversity and equity and inclusion is what makes us strong. OK. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, this this will really kind of we, we need to be. Um, uh, look forward unburdened by what has been. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, it's so important. This is, this is our chance. This is, this is a historical time. Yep. And, yeah. um, and, uh, what, what, you know, there's some criticisms of the Democrat party, you know, they're pushing trans, trans ideology and, and that sort of stuff. Love, I, love is love, baby. Aren't you concerned about maybe, you know, your kids being, well, you, uh, know, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm in a polyamorous relationship. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my wife's black boyfriend teaches me a good deal about how oppressed the, you know, the, their, their history of oppression. And, yep. and so I learn a lot from this. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, it, yeah. It's, it's, so, uh, so as a white male, how do you feel into all of this? Um, well, I, I spend a lot of time trying to make sure I, I de-whitify myself. De-whitify? Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, I, there's probably a better word for it, uh, you know, but I, I, I check my privilege regularly. Okay. Because I know that I come from. Because you're inherently evil. I wouldn't say evil, uh, but the history of whiteness is tied up with a lot of a lot yeah. of past oppression. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. they never built anything, and uh, well, they just brought mo- death and destruction upon the world, mostly by slaves. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. built things by you know by yeah. colonizing, even them. though the British Empire Slave. abolished slavery, and, and but that's, that 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 doesn't count, right? Um, I, I you know I don't know that that's actually true, but uh, you know I, I I do know that 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 we need to uh, atone for our you know. Uh, past and, and, whiteness and how do you feel about someone like uh bobby kennedy who who was formerly democrat trader now trader. Tra- trader grifter you know yeah absolutely the rest of the Ken- kennedy family knows that he's uh, a kook and off the reservation and yeah you know join the deplorables yeah i mean how, how could you possibly join the the orange man you know he, he's you know uh, he, you know how could you join a racist authoritarian you know someone who can't be trusted with power 
I, I, it's it's unimaginable. And what will happen to America if Trump gets elected again? Well, he even says, you know, he don't he didn't we don't think that uh, he doesn't think there'll ever be another reelect another election. I, I don't think he'll ever give up power. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So Kamala is the the Kamala's the way. The Absolutely. Twenty twenty four. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Go, baby. I'm convinced. You got All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Where did you even get that? <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to Cyclops or Robocop <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, that was entertaining, but what's the purpose? What are you trying well, to get across? So, so one of the key things about the ideological Turing test uh, comes from, um, I think it was John Stuart Mill who talked about how you have to know both sides of every argument. Mm. If you're going to be persuasive, you have to know what the best arguments on the other side are. Does right? this go back to, I remember, like, I never did debating when I was at school, but I remember debating uh, competitions and you were given a topic to debate, yeah. So you you didn't get to choose what right. you, the argument that you're going to prosecute. You ha, you were told, and then you and to prove that you're a good debater was to prove that you could take any topic and be able to convince people of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, so so for instance, I mean, I, I could argue uh, communist uh, ideology, you know, Marxism, uh, and and you know, trying to take on those, you know, the whole thing, labor theory of value, all mm. that kind of thing. I think that on the whole, it doesn't stand up at all. And obviously in practice, you know, you can have a great theory, but if all it does is historically produce mass starvation, you know, and it's like, oh, we, just, we didn't try communism hard enough. Yeah, you know what? Why don't you go to a country and, and work it out somewhere else, you yeah. know, and, it, and if you manage to have a worker's paradise, then, oh, you know, yeah, then this we'll talk what, about this it. This is what they used to teach us at school. Uh, communism is perfect in theory, but it doesn't work in practice. Well, no, it doesn't work in theory either. Well, that's true because, I mean, the, you know, they don't understand that labor is not the only source of, of value. Mm. You know, that, that that I can spend, you know, uh, half an hour cooking well, you a meal and and it'll, you know, be less edible than, than what we started off with. But the biggest problem is if someone doesn't believe in communist ideology, then they, they don't fit into that society. So... That's where re-education camps come in. Oh yeah, I mean that's, yeah, and 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 I, and I guess uh, yeah, the, the uh, something there was a thought I had about that, but uh, but I lost it. Uh, I'm, I'm just more thinking about next time we're on. I'm going to dress up like Zali Stick and play the same game. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it is you know that isn't. But it's ra- easy. Wrapping it's your head e- around. It's easy for them because they're just they're just taglines, right? It's it's just marketing <sighs> marketing stuff. So you can rattle that stuff off. But here's a question for you: Do you think a Democrat? Could play the same game and argue as Trump or RFK. Typically, no. Uh, and then this is this is actually, and there were some studies on this. How how well you, how well you even try to understand. Now, I was a bit hyperbolic, a bit to be funny. Yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe not that far off in certain cases, but um, but the degree to which people on the you know the 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 Harris campaign understand what motivates people who who is really poor really weak yeah. and, and and so typically you know the the ideological turing test does not work well the other way but you see i think this is the trap that the right fall into because they look at the policies on the left and they think you guys are destroying our civilization like you're so dangerous like i look at someone like zali stego and i just get i'm like you are you're the enemy like you you the policies that you're pushing upon this country are, are really doing long-term damage to our country. But the effectiveness of the left is they often take a, a topic or, or an issue or, or a subject that uh, most people would agree with. And, and, that, and that's that small issue. They start off with that small issue that most people would say, yeah, then, no, we, we do want you know equal rights for people. We do, you know, we do want inclusiveness. We do want equity, blah, blah, blah. But they just take, then they just go too far with it. Well, I, th- I think there are a couple aspects of it. There, a fundamental issue with the Teals is they believe in climate action now. They they think that that the climate emergency is an existential straight uh, threat. Threat. Thank yeah. you. You know, kind of bar anything else, regardless of the fact that the the plans they make to to, to solve it are, are are nonsense, and the the foundation of their fear is also nonsense. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, then you also have. Uh, there's a couple of, of key things on the political left. One is trust in government, yep. right? Whereas people like you and I understand that we're being lied to at scale in so many levels, yep. right? Yep. Uh, by people who, who who you can't possibly 
think that, that they have the people's best interests at heart. Uh, another one is uh, equity. Um, you know the 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 redistributionist uh, nature, and and there argues, I mean, arguments to be had about to what degree a society should help people who who are trying but fall through the cracks. Um, but true equity is is as Kamala Harris talks about um, equality of outcome, hmm. regardless of input, yeah. and, and that. That is the uh, uh, there be dragons. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, that, that's that's masturbation. Friday, I went to a talk uh, with Jacinta Price at the um, Center of uh, Center of uh, what is it? CIS Center of Anyway, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, sorry, Center of Independent Studies. There it is. And she was talking about the Aboriginal people, and she said we can't act like victims anymore. We need to integrate with society, but uh, the left will will have them believe that they are victims, and they are entitled to all these things. They are entitled to reparations. They are entitled to free housing and free education, and blah 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 blah. Well, does that help them, or does it just make them, you know, dependent on the state? It's not, it's not really helping them at all. Well, that's one of the key things about um, uh, the equality of outcome. And, and if you have respect for other cultures, if you, you do believe, well, you know, we don't think we should change your culture. Well, there are some things that, that the, the outcome of that culture, if you're a hunter-gatherer hmm. and you are true to your hunter-gatherer nature, you will never have a metal fork, right? Yeah. Because that is, that is just not something possible in, in that society. So if you want to value, uh, you know, the, the hunter-gatherer culture and you want equity, it is a lowest common denominator game. It means no one can have anything that is above that subsistence level. Mm. And, you know, so, so you have these conflicting ideas of multiculturalism and equity that will guaranteed lead to disaster. Now, I see you've got some other costumes over there. Is that oh. part of it as well? <laughs> well, there, there, there is. Uh, when we, if we talk about nuclear energy and other things, we, 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 that's I, I brought that for. Uh, okay. For well, do you do you want to do that now, or you've got scientism and gatekeeping here? Do you want to touch on uh, those? Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's let's do that as part of the the nuclear energy talk. Yep. Um, if if it's possible, I'd love to just see the last couple of minutes. You know, kind of end on a on a high note with Kennedy. That was and, the end of it. Oh, that was the end that of it. Was okay. the, yeah, All right. That's great. Cut off okay. there. Yeah, that All was right. the end of the clip. Yep. All right. Well, that's uh, that. That is. Uh, I have to say, as far as that goes, I have not felt more optimistic uh, in years. Well, we're certainly living in very interesting times. I think there is a shift. I mean, we saw it with uh, you know Nigel Farage in the UK. I mean, there's there's other leaders popping up in uh, Canada and France and other places. Yeah. I mean, they're not yeah. always successful, but they are, they are gaining traction. So there is a there is a movement happening. Uh, maybe we're in the complete infancy of that. I hope it all goes well because we can't continue going down the same path as, as we are because it is, it is very destructive. It's, yeah. I mean, not only financially but also the fabric of our society is being uh, diminished. So, uh, look, we can only keep talking about it. We can only keep pushing back against it and uh, carrying on. But let, let's switch to, to nuclear. Do you want to do that or should we do that a different time? Well, we've still got time. Yeah. yeah right, what, what, right. what, what, is there anything else you'd rather? No, no, no. Let, 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 let's do that. Okay. So, um, do you want to pull up the the PowerPoint slide for uh, the nuclear energy? Yeah. Talk? So this this is the presentation that you gave down yeah. in Oberon, and as I said before, if you want to watch the whole thing, you can head to Chris Covery's Facebook page, and uh, but Paul's going to give his nuclear talk right now. Yeah. So should I, if I'm going to click through, do I use? Uh... Uh, you can use the mouse. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Mm. Okay, yep. So, nuclear power in Australia is safe, reliable, and banned. And you, uh, go, can we go back? Yeah. Because um, I, I still can't get this right. But you've said you've you've got it's pronounced nuclear. Yeah. Not new killer. Nuclear. Yeah. Nuclear. Nu right. Can't we just nuclear. say it? Why, can't we just have a, our own accent with it? Why, why? Well, it, yeah, actually, maybe maybe it's like aluminium and aluminum. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, let's yeah, go with that. Right. Influence yeah, us that's for. right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so one of the key things that we got to always keep in mind when we talk about what game we're playing is this isn't a fair game. This isn't an honest game. This is a narrative game. And the powers that be censor scientists that are off script, they deplatform skeptical media, and delete or manipulate inconvenient data. No, they don't. Oh, they <laughs> totally do, yes. Talk to Dr. Plymer about that. Or even Craig Kelly talked about how uh, they were manipulating the temperature readings by putting a, a, a reflective solar panel near it. You remember that? Yeah. 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 
The narrative science is different than the scientific method. The scientific method tries to test hypotheses honestly by, by forming ex experiments that, that honestly try to, try to gather data. Whereas narrative science only studies science and data that supports a conclusion, they confuse scientific consensus with data and la launch ad hominem attacks for disagreements, such as calling people climate deniers. And also it's important to, to, to note that they have appeals to authority. So on, on that note, actually, I have a, a trick up my sleeve. <laughs> this goes into our... Hold on, let's, uh, let's just um, stop sharing that for a moment so I can see this in all its glory. <laughs> <laughs> so the way the uh, credentialization argument goes is if you have a science degree or a few, like I do, and you have a lab coat and you call yourself the Right? There it is. The science. Yeah. So I've transformed myself, mm. right? I am now no longer Paul Vallejo. Well, you look different. You look yeah. more, yeah. yeah. I, I, I am Paul the science Vallejo. Yeah. And everything I say now is infallible. No, I think there is something psychological behind it because I can feel myself uh, viewing you in a completely yeah. different light. You are not allowed to disagree with me because I'm the science. Okay. And you'll be a science denier. Because you you intellectually, you're far superior. So I better not disagree with you because I'm going to get yeah. intellectually destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you disagree, are you the science? No, you're not. No, I'm I just am. A, so you have to yeah. add, agree. It's like the Pope speaking ex cathedra from the chair of St. Peter. He speaks uh -huh. infallibly. Uh -huh. And that is, I learned regarding science, now I am I am the science. You know, um, you know when I, <laughs> growing up, my mate, he used to, um, he, he met, his, met his first girlfriend. And every time we would meet her, he'd buy her a gift. We used to say to him, don't do it because one day you're not going to borrow a gift and she's going to be standing there going, where's my God? He didn't even get me a gift this time. I'm going to be expecting these props every time. I <laughs> don't have you on. I'm going to like, where's Paul with his little, uh, you know, I want a new outfit every every single time. <laughs> All right, let's go back into yep. it. So, yes, that is narrative science. Appeals to authority. Real science does not argue from conclusions and invites falsification, and it collects and argues the data and not credentials. Narrative news echoes the talking points of powerful interests and only finds experts to support the stories they want told. And very importantly, they do gatekeeping. gatekeeping. They ignore events that go against that narrative. Mm. And that happens when it comes to climate issues. It's like, oh, it's a hot day. It's climate change. Oh, it's a cool day. Uh, let's talk about something else. So, for example, if they were to say, oh, it's, a, it's, it's the hottest day on record here yes. in Sydney today, they wouldn't have Professor Ian Plyman to come on and talk about it. Absolutely. And that's that's part of the gatekeeping, is mm. to make sure that the, the people who are highly affected could, could blow through all their narratives. They will never have him on. Yeah. You know, you should go, go to see Ian Plymer's, uh talk that he gave it over on his slide deck and his talk and it is it well, I, I said i said why don't let's take his half an hour speech and send it send him on tour around to all the schools in australia it will they never don't happen. want to because it's all about narrative control yeah zero is a special number yeah yeah there's a green energy narrative that ignores all the bad parts of green energy but we also have to recognize the counter narrative Mm. All the birds that get killed, the farmland that gets destroyed, the 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 flaking of the, the whales, the whales, whales washing up dead on in yep. America. Yep. Yeah. There's a nuclear narrative and a nuclear counter narrative. Now, do you think one of the biggest problems here in Australia is that when it comes to the nuclear narrative, the only narrative that we've seen or heard from or been exposed to is the Simpsons? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's um, like it goes to show you've used a lot of imagery, imagery yeah. from the Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That, and and the, and the show like you know Chernobyl goes on Netflix. Mm. Um, you know, we, yeah, but that was before. Like, I'm talking about when we were growing, like my generation we growing, growing yeah. up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess this is where we get into, and we'll get into later in the slide deck. You know, nuclear radiation because it's new. Um, or at least we think it's new. Nuclear power, at least, is new. And and also, I guess it, it's kind of hard to get past uh, the origin of nuclear energy being uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I mean, if that's the start of your advertising campaign, running a a, a, a power campaign is uh, a little more difficult. Uh, that's a, that's a good question because uh, if it hadn't been for nuclear weaponry and we did develop nuclear power first. Do you yeah. think it would be a completely different view? Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely think so. Um, so uh, yeah, the the um, I mean, the, the obviously you know the the weapons tests. Uh, I mean, 
God, I, I've, I've read some of the stories about what that was like, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and, oh, and the bombs. There's a I mean, good, people taking their skin off like a glove. Oh, and go, go. Uh, there's a channel on YouTube. It's called World War Two. Uh, it, it's the Time Ghost Army guys. Mm. Um, uh, it's fan, they've got a series called War Against Humanity. Yeah, it is unbelievable. I mean, it's horrific. Yeah. Um, not. I mean, they talk about because. Well, they're up to that point where uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki get get bombed. So that they talk about that, they take it from the perspective of, of children and you know and all that sort of thing. But it was horrific and it was a, it was yeah. a horrible time and it, yeah. it was a war on humanity. And and we also didn't understand some of the effects of that. Like for instance, when they first uh, had the X-ray machines, um, people were X-raying their hands for fun. There yeah. was also the st- story of the radium girls. Uh, have you ever heard about this? Um, they no. had glow in the dark watches that yeah. they would paint r- radium on, so you could see your, your 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 watch in the dark. Oh wow! And the girls, they the the people who did this, they they would sharpen the uh, the paintbrush with their oh. and and so their their jaws just rotted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I heard about a woman that first discovered. I'm going to say uranium, but it might have been something else. It was a rock, and she just put it in her pocket and started mm. carrying it around, and she she died from it. Mm. Because you didn't realize it was radioactive. I mean, you see, I guess the hard part about that to believe is is that that wouldn't have been a natural rock because uranium two thirty eight, which mm. is the vast majority of the uranium that we have, yeah. has got a half life of like five billion years. Yeah, uh, and um, uh, plus or minus a couple of billion, but it's in the billions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and, and it, it's 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 more of uh, you know lead is more dangerous to ingest than that would be. The radioactivity of that is minimal, so what rock she would have had and where she would have got it, I'd be curious. Yeah, I, I, about. I remember hearing I mean, about it when I was a kid or something yeah. like that. Because the natural radioactivity we have in our environment is only here because it uh, it, it, it comes from the origins of Earth. So, Because well, so, if it had a half-life of just a few hundred thousand years or a hundred thousand, it'd be gone by now. I think it was Dr. Peter Reed at the Environment and Energy Forum was mm. saying that even in everyone's backyard, they've got about a kilogram of uranium yeah. or something. Yeah, I mean, because of its long half-life, it is not a significant energy source. Uh-huh. You know, uh, and, and as we talk about later in, in, in the show, um, bananas have uh, one, 120 parts per million of our bananas yep. have uh, radioactive K40, uh, yeah. potassium 40. Okay, well, let's um, let's go back into it because, uh, I mean, it's good to discuss these as we go yeah, along. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Happy to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's just a bit about my background. Well, go, go, go. I mean, I think go. this is important. All right. Um, so, yeah, science, uh, uh, a Bachelor of Science in Engineering from the University of Virginia, where I studied nuclear engineering and aerospace engineering, um, Master of Science from the University of Social Science from the University of Houston, and Economics from the University of Sydney at NASA. I did uh, one of the things that we covered was the safety and, and reliability of a nuclear rocket. Mm-hmm. So we, we worked on that for a little bit just to, to kind of see whether what was what was feasible. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a that's a bit about my background. Um, one of the things to keep in mind: chemical and nuclear energy are fundamentally different. So all all the energy that we see used around us, except for the sun, is all chemical energy. So whether it's the petrol in your car or the food you eat, it, it, all the energy comes from the rearrangement of electrons uh, on the atom. But only when we get into nuclear energy, where the, the nucleus of the atom is either split or fused, that is an entirely different energy source. And you see fusion with the sun, and you see fission with uh, with nuclear reactors. So in terms of uh, the heat value uh, of, of different fuel sources, chemical energy is between 10 to 100 megajoules per kilogram, whereas nuclear power can be between millions, tens of millions, or more. And so, I mean, that, that air gap, given this is an exponential curve, right? So every, every you know, line is a, a times 10. Uh, there's this just absolutely enormous gap in terms of uh, energy density. I'd love for you to put wind and solar on here. Oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's it's down with the chemicals. It's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not uh, it's not a significant. The energy density on that's terrible. Yeah, um, and that's one of the things that you, you, you one of the reasons why you have so, so much more 
waste in, in terms of volume with any chemical energy or wind and solar is is because of energy density. How long? How much did it cost you to get that the embroidery? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate the jacket. I think, I think it's a good. They door. question why you were doing it. I say, what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, Steph, Stephanie got this done for me, which I really appreciate. Uh, I, th- I think it, I think it's, it's going to be the new brand. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I like being in- infallible. You yeah, know, don't, yeah. Don't you? you look good in it. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah, and infallible. Yeah, you just need some pens or something there. Oh yeah, yeah maybe a pocket a protector. And yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, so, what, uh, out of the things we care about for our power supply, we want uh, low cost, but then we need reliable power supply and uh, and safe power. So, in terms of reliability, one of the key things is, do you rely on the goodwill of foreign actors for your fuel source? No, of course not. I mean, you don't want to. We, but just but that's study what study do. history. I mean, exactly. R- resources are one of the main drivers of war. I mean, yeah, Japan look, during World War II. Hitler as well. I mean, that's yeah. why I wanted to go into. I mean, not just resources, but farming land and living space, and mm. I mean, uh, all these things are incredibly important. And, and that's one. Yeah, we have everything we need here. Yeah, food. Yeah. Yes, I food, always make this power. Point. Yep, you know, a beautiful culture. Yep. You know, it, it's 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 we have everything we need, and uh, Australia is the energy superpower of the world. Well, tell tell me about this because you've made this point, and uh, I'm stealing it because it's a good point. <laughs> no, you know, please, you, I, I, talking, I, I I I want the 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 principle out there. You know, I, I have no but, no desire. But you talk about taking our cheap, reliable energy and shift. Um, Shipping it offshore and yeah. then importing, uh, uh, you know, unreliable, expensive forms of energy in, in wind and solar from China and other places. Yep, yep. That, that's the the punchline slide of the slide deck. Is basically there are only two ways to to get to net zero. Uh, and I don't think you should get to net zero. I, I don't think the carbon emissions is a problem. Yep. But if you are going to do it, there's only two ways to to, to get that. One is uh, you can use nuclear energy, which has no carbon emissions. And as, as we talked about before, we are the nuclear power superpower of the world with the, the world's largest uh, uranium reserves. The other way, you see, one of the things people don't don't really realize is that Australia exports 200 metric 200 million tons of uh, thermal coal uh, per year, mm. uh, which can generate 500 terawatt hours of electricity. Yeah. Right. So Asia is getting that energy, and their their power bill is nine cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah. Here we're paying 22 cents a kilowatt hour. I personally looked at my power bill. I'm paying 42 cents a kilowatt hour. Right. Mm. So we're exporting cheap, reliable energy where it's burnt. Yeah. Now the idea that that's net zero, you know, even if we went all wind and solar here and we didn't emit a bit of carbon dioxide, we're exporting it to be burnt elsewhere. Yeah. Right. I, so it's still going into the atmosphere. Actually, I was uh, having a conversation at uh, dinner, and uh, we we're talking about this. One of the gentlemen were talking about um, uh, Allegra Spender in Wentworth, and she was apparently destroyed by this uh, conversation that he had. She had with someone in a pub somewhere, mm. but they were using the argument. Uh, can we change the temperature just in Wentworth? <laughs> and how much can we change the temperature by? And obviously, anyone can answer that. No, yeah, you can't. Right. Well, then why do we think we can change the temperature here in Australia and not the whole world? So, so as you're saying, we're taking our coal, shipping it off yeah, shore. And they're they're cheaply gonna, elsewhere. Yeah. Cheaply and reliably yeah. elsewhere. And they're, they're going to burn. It's still going to go into the... Atmosphere. The world's atmosphere. Absolutely. Absolutely. So why do we think we're going to be able to change the temperature from here it, in Australia? It, it, it's 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 nonsense and it's narrative control. Now, so so this is the the other way to get to net zero is that one is nuclear. Mm. The other is to take half of the coal that we export to Asia, yeah. and we bring it right back into port to burn reliably and cheaply ourselves. I don't understand that though. What do you mean by that? Well, it makes a zero. Oh, I it see. Comes on right back to. You port. know what I think the zero is going to be. So it's when I was growing up, you know, you go to a shop and they'd give you a paper bag and then it was like, oh, no, 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 we can't have that anymore because we're cutting down trees mm-hmm. and that's bad, so we're going to have to go to plastic bags. Oh, now, yeah. Now, now, now we can't have plastic bags and you go to some shops and they'll give you a paper bag. <laughs> I think we're taking our coal. We're saying, no, coal's bad, coal's bad, coal's bad. We can't have coal anymore. We have to have wind and solar. So we're pumping all this money into wind and solar. We're going to have wind and solar and then we're going to – going to realize that no that's terrible because one it doesn't work and two it's environment environmentally destructive and three the amount of land that's going to take for these projects is off the scale so we can't go down that path so we're going to have to switch to nuclear energy 
And then we're going to switch to nuclear energy. We're going to spend trillions of dollars doing that. And then we're going to realize, as Ian Plymer says, we're running out of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We need to go back and burn some coal. That's the net, that's the zero. <laughs> <laughs> right back to start. Yeah, back to the start. Yeah, yeah. And this yeah. is the crazy. I mean, and 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 in that process, the people investing in this stuff are making money each and every single time. Uh, well, off our, I mean, off well, our taxpayer well, dollars. Yeah, and, and that's the nature. I mean, that that is the fundamental nature. The, like, who who benefits from this? Where where we export reliable energy to be burnt elsewhere cheaply, mm. and import unreliable, uh, farm destroying, koala killing, high cost energy. Yeah. Who's the benefit? Not Australia. Yeah. Um, but but let me you know uh, put it this way: if 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 you are in charge of let's say Asian economies, uh, and you can convince the suckers, uh, <laughs> yeah. in other parts of the world to export cheap, reliable energy to you. And you get to, to, to send them unreliable energy and keep them dependent on you, not just keep them dependent on your, 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 your manufacturing, because uh, hell, all of your manufacturing sources w- went bankrupt because you have high energy costs. So now we're dependent on manufacturing mm. and we're dependent on energy. Who does that benefit? Not us. You would have thought we would have learnt from COVID when we couldn't produce our own masks and everyone was saying, we can't be relying on China anymore. We can't be relying on China anymore. And you've still got Chris Bowen and Tanya Plibersik and Anthony Albanese and all the teals running around saying, no, we, we, what, we need to What might Windows explain off. that though, Steve? Why would a politician, when pointed out the obviousness of the nonsense of net zero, when pointed out the obviousness of, 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 of having the, our reliability you know, be be at the mercy of of exports from other countries. What would make a politician accept that? Three things. One, they don't want to lose a political argument, so they want to, don't want to backtrack on their mm-hmm. position that they've already put forward. So be- every decision becomes political. Mm-hmm. Second thing is, uh, you know, you can use the phrase, but the best manipulators are the ones who've already been manipulated. Mm. And and you know some of these politicians, you know they've they've been manipulated and they've bought it, you know hook, hook line and sinker. Mm. Or three, they're invested in it. Yeah, I mean, as as as, as Tucker Carlson uh, mentioned, um, you know, I don't know how expensive your politicians are, but you know, ours aren't that expensive, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you know, if if you can guarantee success, if you can guarantee cheap energy for your country, uh, you know, by you can either pay through the nose for for their natural resource. Or you can buy their politicians and convince them for yeah. about some bullshit. Uh, then um, the second option is much cheaper. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, uh, this is interesting because you're talking about the uh, amount of uranium and also thorium. I know we don't talk enough about thorium uh, that we have here in Australia. Yeah, we're, we have the third largest uh, reserves in the world for thorium. You can do two nuclear fuel cycles. You can either do uranium or you can do thorium. Historically, the reason why we focus on uranium is it's easier to build bombs out of the uranium fueled cycle. So, given that the first efforts for uh, for uranium enrichment and nuclear power, well, not nuclear power, but nuclear the nuclear fuel cycle is was to build bombs. So, so the Hiroshima bomb was a uranium bomb, and the Nagasaki was a plutonium. Correct. Bomb? Yeah. That's actually right. I probably yeah. I think I learned. Yeah, that. Wow. that that that's a that's a rare nugget that you got there. Yeah, yeah. that's that. Not, not a lot of people know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, um, so you, plutonium you 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 get to se- separate chemically out of the, uh, the the uranium fuel cycle. So the enrichment of uranium is uh, hard and high energy. But once you uh, once you do that and you can get a reactor going, then you can create plutonium and extract that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, the reliance on foreign uh, supply, like windmill magnets, to require rare earth mining, uh, or the cobalt to smooth out the unreliable intermittent power. Why did the left care about this? The, does it show up on the ABC? I guess not. No, no. I mean, it surely they. I mean, the right talk about this a lot. Surely, yeah. surely they would have heard it somewhere. How much do you find your very left of center friends like to see outside of the narrative that they're being given? I guess I don't have many left of center friends. Uh, Well, I'll tell you that um, there isn't a lot of curiosity to go to what they call non-credible sources. Does this go back to your ideological Turing Turing test? test. Uh, Well, to some degree, I mean, it's helpful to know why they think what they think, where their where where their information comes from, and why they. A lot of times, don't like to go out. I mean, you know, this is the thing. Echo chambers. You know, can we go back to that last slide? Yeah. 
Echo chambers are comfortable places. We like to be told how right and smart we are. I would and love how good we are. I would love to take this footage, cut out the writing at the top. So just take the, the image, mm. print it up, laminate it. Also take an image of the uh, the clearing that's taking place in, in far north Queensland that Stephen Nowakowski is doing so well at, at documenting. La- you know, print that one and laminate it. And maybe t- take a photo of some Uyghurs or something like that and go out into the people that are voting for these teals and just say, do you agree with this, this child labour? Mm. Do you agree with mm. this land clearing? And, then, and and get their reactions and then turn around and say, who did you vote for at the last election? And that's one of the key things is that, you know, a lot of so – what are the values that the different groups have and compassion and is, is is supposedly that's the 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 one of the key values of of the political left, hmm. um, but they are being you know the, the the negative consequences of their policies are whitewashed away from from what they can see. Yeah. So uh, you also want baseload power. Um, wind and solar have fluctuating output, and but demand has to be met at all times of day every day to avoid blackouts. And the question then is, oh, and nuclear can provide baseload power, whereas intermittent wind and solar can't. So when wind and solar fail, when there's a gap, our economy falls through it. Hey, he's got a shirt kind of like mine. <laughs> um, and you fall through the gaps in power, and then, you, then you're partying like it's 1699 in an Amish paradise. Candlelight dinners sound romantic, but what about hospitals, freezers, public transport, school and, and air care, age care facilities? The other thing you want is uh, safety, safety in production, safety in in disposal. And people judge nuclear by old designs. When Fukushima and Three Mile Island were, were built, this was the state of our telephones and our computers. And the thing that people uh, try when they are comparing it to modern wind and solar, well, let's look at what wind and solar uh, power was like in the 1970s. There was none. So we have to. We should compare modern technologies to modern technologies, and then we let's talk a little bit first about radiation and the fact that you can't avoid it because natural radiation is everywhere. Like as you said, uranium in the soil. You also have um, a radon gas and cosmic rays always coming from space. And what we talked about earlier, uh, the essential uh, mineral of potassium is 120 parts per million, K40, radioactive potassium. Now, so this this chart, this is a fun one. So um, every blue little blue box represents a certain amount of radiation. And I, I will say this: the first presentation you had, I saw this on the screen. I'm like, oh, this is too much. I didn't pay too much attention. But the and, second time around, I did because we did the two symposiums. Sure. So I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm. And on a bigger screen, it actually shows up a, a bit better. So you know the. Eating, eating one banana gives you 0.1 microsieverts. Yep, yep. And your background dose for an average day is 10 microsieverts. Mm. An airplane flight, this is you know, getting people to understand that we live naturally with radiation all the time. Yeah. An arm x-ray, uh, a, 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 the extra dose you have from being um, at, a, at a high elevation. So if you combine all these blue sources, all these blue dots, they all combine to these three um, these three green dots, yeah. which is about 60 microsieverts. So a couple of key things here, your natural potassium per, per year gives you 390 microsieverts. Mm-hmm. Um, your average yearly dose is 3.6 mil- <gasps> millisieverts, and the maximum external dose from Three Mile Island was about one millisievert. So, you know, this is, this is and, and, the, and the chart actually continues. There's also uh, all those green dots com- you know, equal three red dots. It's actually a very cool chart. I, I do. Uh, I, I didn't bring it in this part of the, of the presentation, but you can see. Okay, how how much do you have to get to actually have a lethal dose? Well, this is the thing. So apparently, no one died at Fukushima. Um, on at, at Chernobyl, someone people did. At I think three, Chernobyl was about thirty odd. Yeah, and, and, and Three Mile Island, no one died. Yeah, is my understanding. Yeah. Fukushima, I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, there, there. There may very well be people who have had their lives shortened, but one of the key things is, um, you know, those were all d- old designs, uh, you know, because if you have um, 
uh, if you have an uncontrolled burn, an un, you know, critic, uh, 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 where, where there's a nuclear fire and things are spilling out into the atmosphere and into the water, hmm. yeah, that that is a danger for the local community. And that is why later in the presentation, I make it really important point. I think every nuclear power plant should be replaced with passive safety advanced power. Um uh, okay, uh, I forgot the question I was going to. That's ask. right. Yeah. So, um, you know, so the key, the key of uh, advanced of passive safety that w we'll get into. Oh, that's what I was going to yeah, say. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I've heard somewhere that uh, a certain degree of radiation is actually good for us. Well, I mean, at the very least, it's not harmful. I mean, our bodies have grown up with it, yeah. uh, you know, throughout history, yeah. and it's a natural part of uh, of our cycle. You can argue. You know, I, I don't know if there's been studies that have removed. How, how could you actually do that? It, you know, remove your radiation sources and test that hypothesis. Well, I guess that's a good point. There's no point in time where you could be, be living in a radiation-free area. Yeah. No, not. I mean, because e even if you could insulate yourself from all, you know, from cosmic rays, you lived underground, right? And that's not going to be terribly good. But there's for you. radiation in the ground. Too. Well, there's that's right. There's radiation. All right. So let's say you, you kind of uh, strip all the all of that out by kind of insulating your environment, you still have to get the radioactive potassium out of yourself. And I don't know how you do that. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, I mean, this is all interesting stuff. I think, and look, I will say this just quickly. I think, I think this is incredibly intelligent uh, or at least politically intelligent on Peter Dutton's part to put this policy forward so early, so far out from the election, so we can have discussions like this. Yeah, it's good to have and, and people can learn this information because we're not. We, we if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't be exposed to this sort of stuff. This, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely good to discuss, and that's where the the key thing and and why I love Kennedy so so much is is open. Rational yeah. debate, non-censored, because it's the censorship and the media narrative that's what's actually killing yeah. us and killing our economy. And, um, and the podcasts have uh, have played their part in all that stuff as well, which is significant. Yeah. So, um, nope. Uh, over here, yeah, there we go. Okay, so nuclear is already the safest way to make reliable electricity, where deaths from accidents and air pollution are lower than others. Uh, in terms of how the nuclear uh, decay happens or the split happens and what particles can come out, you can have either alpha particles, which is basically a helium nucleus. Uh, beta radiation is a high-energy electron. Gamma radiation is high-energy photon. And a neutron radiation. So the, the gamma radiation is basically high-energy uh, x-rays. So it's, you know, the, the high-energy... Um, uh, but like lower lower uh, energy is visible light, and even lower than that is microwaves and other things. Uh, are any of those particularly more dangerous than the others? Yeah, you know it's interesting. Um, so even in the microwave, uh, in this uh, infrared area, there are um, uh, frequencies of light that interact with different elements more than others. Mm. There's a particular uh, place where it interacts maybe more with iron or oxygen. I even in the visible light frame. Uh, just above uh, here, you have your UVA, UVB, and UVC. So UVB is what gives you uh, vitamin D. I think it's 270 nanometers. I might have that wrong. Um, but in terms of this wavelength, there's a particular frequency right in here that is essential for your production of vitamin C. Yeah. And if it's a bit lower or a bit higher, you you, you don't get it. actually UVC is filtered out by uh, the uh, the by the atmosphere. Fortunately, because mm. that actually is quite dangerous. Yeah. So our atmosphere protects us from UVC, allows through UVA and B. Yeah. And UVB gives us uh, our vitamin D. And does UVA cause? Um, yeah. it, it, it does. It penetrates a bit deeper into the skin. Because this is what this is. I've watched a lecture um, about uh, the introduction of sunscreens. And th this was a while ago, and it was talking about this the, the differences in the A and the B. Yep. And the uh, the first sunscreens they came out with blocked the B, but let in the that's, A. That's right. And yeah. And if you look at the cases yep. of melanoma since sunscreen was introduced, they've actually increased. Yes. And now sunscreens block out both the A and the B. Yeah. Which is not good, also because right. you're not because letting you need, in the, You need your 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 your, your D. Yeah. Your right. vitamin D. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, uh, it, you know, this is another example. I mean, it seems like everything that we're taught about is <laughs> yes, right. The food, the food pyramid. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Margarine. I grew up eating margarine. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, can we mention the V word? 
Yeah. Back, back. Vaccines. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're not, we're already banned. So it's too late. Okay. Well, good. We're on Rumble. Yeah. All right. Good. 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 All right. I can't believe so, we're not banned on Facebook, but we will be. <laughs> We'll be back on YouTube in a week, but okay. we're going to lose it. I mean, it's just, it's clear well, we're going to use that channel. So if you do watch us on YouTube, please follow us on Rumble yeah. or sign up to the website. So uh, this is how the uh, uranium fuel cycle, uh, you get what, what's called a chain reaction. One neutron splits the uranium-235 atom. Most uranium is 238, but uh, uh, the enriched uranium enriches the amount of U-235. So that's essentially like with the with the nuclear weapons – you start the chain reaction, and that's that's, right. that's incredibly difficult, right? They they struggle with that in the designs. Well, actually, getting the chain reaction going is not that hard. Okay. The problem is keeping it from blowing up too soon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe that would. Yeah. yeah so 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 that's that. But we, we can talk about but, that if you want. And basically, when they first designed the bombs, they were uh, they were afraid that the chain reaction wouldn't stop. Uh, there, there, we'll there were going. some bets that uh, um, there were some bets that yeah, they, they might lose half of Nevada as one, one <laughs> you know, one one of the Los Alamos physicists thought that that yeah, he he wasn't a uh, popular at the party. Okay, um, but yeah, how how much they they did have to bet how much they had. So um, alpha rays, uh, so radiation isn't hard to shield as long as it's outside of you. Alpha rays are stopped by a piece of paper. Beta rays, uh, thin aluminum, neutrons, um, which we talked about before. Since they have no charge, uh, they don't stop uh, when you know as easily. But they are stopped by water uh, or concrete. Now, where you have the little radioactive symbols there, the, the, uh, this this is the how much they ionize. So, if you have an an alpha emitter inside of you, it's going to do a lot of damage. Okay, right. But on the outside of you. It, it's it won't get get past your skin, okay? Right? Uh, at least alpha rays won't. So it's it's basically it's it's uh, yeah how how much it, it ionizes. So nuclear is safe as long as you use passive safety. If if you keep if you don't have if you have a nuclear fire, then it goes up into the air. It can get in the soil, get into your lungs, that kind of thing. So the key is make sure you avoid meltdowns. Active safety needs the intervention. It needs people to do things. It needs uh, a lot. Uh, Hardware to do things. Pat, the idea of passive safety is it doesn't require anything. Mm. Passive safety relies on physics. So in the case of this dam, if the water level rises, it goes right into the spillway. So the safety system automatically activates without anyone having to do anything. That's yep. the key about passive safety. Um, and uh, the uh, an example of this would be the freeze plug of a molten salt reactor that's kept cool. So the freeze plug keeps the 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 nuclear material and the criticality it's somewhere above uh the freeze plug and if external power fails all the freeze plug melts before you have a a a problem uh you know with a fire or anything freeze plug melts and the and the material goes into dump tanks where it's separated into three that's pretty key because if it's all in one place it has criticality and will blow up okay so you the point of, of criticality is you need um, neutron emitters to be close to other fissile neutron emitters. So, so this is so passive safety. So, if yeah. the, the, there's a problem. The freeze plug, plug, plug melts, melts, and and then and it, it, it goes into, into dump tanks, tanks. Yeah. right? And it cools without anyone to having to do anything. So, so there's no there's no chance of meltdown. There's no chance of a, a catastrophe or anything like that. Right. As as long as it's properly designed for passive safety, that's correct. So, so why do you have Chris Bowen and, and the Teals running around saying, "Oh, you know, it's too dangerous, and we, you know, we don't want another Fukushima and blah blah blah"? Narrative control. Hmm. Yeah. So the AP one thousand plant that was proposed by Peter Dutton has seventy two hours of passive safety systems. So one of the the I, I would prefer I would prefer more. Um, which which can easily be designed, um, but but for seventy two hours, if if external power fails, because that is one of the dangerous things about a lot of old systems, is if you lose electricity, you lose cooling pumps. And that's what happened with Fukushima. They didn't lose the electricity, but the the, the tsunami knocked off the pool. Well, uh, the, the cooling both. Pump. They, they they lost the they lost the primary cooling pumps yeah. and the diesel generators on the roof. Yeah. You know, so they didn't have a backup system either because yeah, the tsunami okay. blew the g- diesel generators. Now, now they, they were told, Hey, you probably shouldn't have those up there. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, they, they cut costs. And, so what happens after the 72 hours? Is the, the then, 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 then you need diesel, uh, uh, cooling to, to circulate the cooling water. Um, for passive safety, and that's that's no longer pass, pass, passive safety for seventy two hours. One of the good parts about it is, it's already non critical, mm-hmm. so so it's not 
you know, and and the power level is already at less than one percent. Okay, power. so the, the fuel um, goes into these these dumps, right? Well, this this system is not a uh, freeze plug system. Uh, this uh, so this is a water. That one was a uh, liquid salt, yep. uh, molten salt reactor. This yep. one is a um, it, it is a uh, kind of more typical fuel rod water cycle. And, uh, and um, so, how does the safety compare with the the, the previous? Yeah. So, um, so, so it does have, so the, the other ones, once they lost external power and they lost circulating water, there was a problem right away. One of the, one of the key parts about this is the power level goes down to less than 1% because as soon as you stop criticality, hmm. it stops cooling, it stops producing heat. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then, and, and, and so, and then it just, it, it, it's, it's cooling. And then the more, it, so it, it, at 72 hours, it's less than 1% of its, its heat at when it's functioning. Okay. So you're already le- at less So where's the danger with it then? Uh, the problem there is that even at that level of, of heat, it would still burn if it wasn't uh, ke- being kept cool by water flow. Okay. And how do you completely... So if well, this, well, one, one, one thing that they could do is they could they could build sort of a, a water tank near it yeah. that, that has that 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 doesn't require diesel to circulate water. But how how long do you have to pump the water through it before it becomes uh, safe? cool enough to 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 not be able to catch fire without any external intervention. Yeah. Um, kind of a bit of a long time. Okay. So, so, uh, because air is such a good insulator, yeah. um, it, it, it doesn't, it can't radiate that, you know, that's why we have radiators in our car mm. is, is we, we have to get the heat out of the, and so you have, you know, you have to have airflow, a lot of it. Yeah. Right. And, you know, with the, if you just have a, a reactor core sitting there with nothing keeping it, Nothing blowing by it, keeping it cool, but you know, or you have a better, um, uh, you know, a non-air w- water is much better than air. Hmm. Uh, other things that conduct electric uh, conduct heat would be better. Yeah. So, um, so this is an inva- advanced reactor generation for you know, kind of uh, liquid thorium de- reactor example where you have a freeze plug like you talked about. The um, the it's it's very high heat um, and and and. And much more efficient, but it, it, it takes it takes advanced materials to, to to do some of this. And now, explain why we would potentially use thorium over uranium. Um, so one of the advantages of thorium is it is a bit harder to uh, make bombs out of. So there it, lower, it does lower uh, some of the nuclear proliferation risk. Yep. Uh, and um, there is another benefit to it. Um, uh, I think having to do with the recycling side because it basically has a, a different different chains of elements that come out of each uh, out of each uh, fuel cycle. Yeah. Um, so th- th- it's there are some people with thorium. Uh, I think India has a thorium um, research reactor. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what comes out of that. Um, so generation four. So uh, the the AP one thousand, which Peter Dutton proposed, is an AT, uh, was eleven hundred megawatt. Generation three plus uh, generation four reactors. Um, uh, can, are, one of the things about them is they're called fast reactors, and the reason is they don't slow down the neutrons to to create criticality. Most when the neutron slows, it can be more easily absorbed by uranium two thirty five. That's why um, that's why it's typically done. But the fast reactors they can consume more waste than they produce, and they can destroy weapon grade material by bombarding them with neutrons, mm. and they can actually create more fuel than they produce so we, we could talk about that more but uh, we'll kind of i would like to ask you how far down uh, how far down the line are we with this technology um, are there more advancements to come or yeah. have we fleshed out a lot of no, it? no no there, there are no generation four advanced reactors uh, in commercial operation at this point but the designs uh, are, are are there um you know i think i don't know what material sciences uh, need need to be advanced in order for that to happen but the the potential with this is you can literally breed fuel you can make more fuel than you produce than wow. you consume yeah right and you can destroy weapons grade material and destroy the nuclear waste by basically putting, you know, keep on bombarding it with neutrons until it's, it's Wouldn't we love to get us to a situation in the world where we can take all of the nuclear weapons that are around the joint and start using them for power and get yeah, rid of well, them? Well, some, some of that actually was already done. Uh, the the Russian, um, uh, some of the Russian uh, weapons were, were sold. Uh, actually, I wonder if, was that, was that Clinton involved at the... Um, 
Anyway, they they took they took the highly enriched uh, fuel for bombs and then they diluted them hmm. and and put them in reactors. Yeah, okay, yeah. So some of that was done in the two thousands after, uh, um, you know, the end of the Cold War. Yep. Um, the other thing you want is environmental safety, and I gave a talk uh, about how. You know, my happy place is, is nature, and you know why is a, a kid from the Bronx talking uh, to the Climate Forum in Oberon? You see, I didn't know that you grew up in the Bronx. I was, uh, yeah, that was the first few years in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. Would have yeah. been rough, right? Well, it depends well, it on which part of the Bronx. Uh, you know, like a lot of places, they have safer areas and not so safe areas. I, I moved out of the Bronx when I was four uh, okay. to about you know twenty minutes away from there. I remember I, I stayed in one hundred and tenth. Sorry, 108th Avenue, just like opposite Central Park. Yeah, Har- uh, kind of close to Harlem. Yeah. And the question is, was it in the 80s when it was no, they, real? No, this was, this was 2013, uh, and I got yeah. told, don't go north beyond 110th. Yeah, well, back in the 80s when I went to high school, uh, yeah, you wouldn't you, – you wouldn't, so that area gentrified in the yeah. 10, 20 years after that to, to become much softer. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, so the thing about nuclear waste, it, because of the high energy density, uh, this is something that you've talked about in the past. I'm going to get a prop now. Yeah, good. Uh, one pinky's worth of, of nuclear fuel rod can power someone's life for a decade. Uh, a, a soda can's worth can power their whole life. And that's even before it gets recycled. Um, you know, so because of the vast energy de- density, the, the the there's a tiny amount of waste left over that needs to be handled. So uh, you know, any listeners to this podcast will have seen this floating around all the place. Adam, this is an Adam Zara special. So this is the, this is the soda can of, yeah. of waste for each person for their whole, whole life. life, whole life. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, and and the energy density that's a, fa- a function of of how dense that energy. And as long as you have passive safety systems, um, you can you know Australia has all the potential energy they need for mm, thousands of and then years. You could potentially recycle thousands something. of years. Yes, uh, that, that's uh, yeah, you, you you do get you can recycle that because a lot of the uranium is you know the uranium two thirty eight can go right back into the 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 fuel breeder. Just don't drink it. No. <laughs> no, no, yeah, uh, radiation on the outside. I went, I went to Adam's place. I went and picked it up. I'm like, how come your one's, your one's um, so light? He'd already drunk. It. Anyway, I just need to bring that back up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so we've spoken about you know what we could have here, but this is the alternative, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know the so-called green energy. There's nothing green about it. There's nothing renewable about wind and solar. There's nothing net zero about our our, our our net zero plan. We're still shipping off our coal to be burned reliably elsewhere. So whether it's from our lithium mines or whether it's green energy, the, the battery, the cobalt in the Congo, uh, or the silica mines in China to make our, our our solar panels, you know, you can get they get silicosis, they you know, from the silica mines, mm. um, and the, that's on the production side on the on the uh, waste side recycling is also nonsense. The um, the windmill blades go into landfill. The solar panels, you know, they, these are put together. I mean, could you theoretically recycle some of the stuff? Yeah, well, with chemical baths and 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 you know acid to try to draw out some of the materials. But it, it in general, it's not worth it. And it goes to landfill. Well, I've heard it's you know, incredibly so, expensive. Yes, right. Yeah. yeah, and and chemically, and you're not just you know, it's not just money, but the chemicals that go into the processes that allow you to do that are toxic as well. Mm-hmm. So, what are we going to do with the megatons of toxic trash? You know, the only thing that recycles well uh, there is green narratives, green stories. <laughs> like in 2009, the president of the Maldives signed a document underwater telling people stop using, stop making CO2 because otherwise. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, that's him signing. Oh, yes, come that's on, him signing. Oh, uh, pre- yep, yep, yep. Uh, and then in 2015, uh, the president, the the UN, at the UN climate conference in in Lima, they said, "Will we survive or will we disappear under the sea, seas?" And then in 2020, the Maldives bu- built five new airports. <laughs> um. Or we're going to drown. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. Well, that, uh, that's the only thing about their plan yeah. that re- that the Ian Plant was about Fort Denison in Sydney. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, land use, and this is where the sadness of Oberon comes into play. You know how 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 little land footprint you need for nuclear or coal. There's a, there's a uh, document you can still find online. I've started talking about this because I've only just Wade Northhausen uh, 
told me about this only two weeks ago or so. The Victorian government put out a document where uh, they were um, trying to uh, argue the case as to why we need offshore wind as opposed to mm. just completely onshore wind. And they admitted that to get to net zero in Victoria, they would need 70% of Victoria's agricultural land to yeah. do it. And that's why they say, oh, well, that's why we need some offshore wind. And and, and the one that got proposed down in the Gippsland is 15,000 square kilometres of offshore wind. It's sickening. It's sickening. And so, so uh, you know, and, and, and completely unnecessary. And they're deleted, completely. but you can still find it online, by the way. Self-destructive. It's, it's um, it, it, you know, the degree to which we're being lied to about so many things is, is truly head spinning. Yeah, it's really it's really quite something, and this is yeah. So the last couple slides. This is where we talked about earlier. We are exporting 500 terawatts of reliable cheap energy, uh, selling it where it, the power costs there are nine cents a kilowatt hour, and we're looking in our total consumption uh, for electricity in in Australia is 250 terawatts. So half of of if we brought back. Uh, Half of the energy that 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 we export is what we we would use. So we're trying. We're looking at importing 250 terawatts of unreliable. We're, we're paying about 22 cents a kilowatt hour plus or minus. I personally pay 42 cents a kilowatt hour at my power bill. And you know when we do this, when we export reliable cheap energy. We can't make a lot of things, creating additional dependence. And you see, this is not an attack on Asian people or no. Asian countries or anything. We should be thinking about ourselves first. Absolutely. We should be energy independent, not energy dependent on other countries. Right. They're thinking of themselves by by of importing course, our so, cheap energy. I, I suppose they should. I mean, and, they, and, and that's their job. Their yeah. job is to look after their people, but our job is to look after our yep. people. That's right. Right. And so the only way to get to net zero, as we talked about before, is to take half of what we would uh, send overseas to be burnt cheaply in Asia and bring it right back into port. Yeah. And and that would be vastly more sensible. Well, of course, even better than that, of course, is to not have it leave the port in the first place, well, but vastly more sensible net zero than what we're doing. Well, the net zero should be that we have no renewables at all. Well, yes. Get rid of that. That's what this and, is. And go back to yeah. the reliable energy system that we had previously. Yeah. You know, it was, it was it, the best, it works. One, one of the best energy systems yeah. in the world, and, and it's not like this: the, the the coal that's being dug out isn't being burnt, just not reliably and cheaply by us. We'll just wait until the tillers want to stop mining. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and then, well, that's kind so of we weird. have expensive energy, but we, yeah. we have the a, thing is, if they tried to do that now, they know they'd lose so much political support. So they have to keep the hypocrisy going in order to keep the narrative alive. That's just completely madness. Yes, it is. All right, Paul. Uh, I think you're almost at the end now, are you? Yep, it's done. Oh, that's done. done. Okay, well, that was, done that was dusted. fantastic. I mean, that's why I wanted to go through it again. You can watch it on Chris's, Chris Carvery's uh, page. I mean, Paul was fantastic. Uh, Professor Ian Plyme was fantastic. All the speakers were fantastic. Dr. Alan Moran, Grant Piper, Craig Kelly was really yep. good. Uh, Tony Leverus. Yeah, Tony Tony Oliveris was uh, was good as well. He talked about specifically some of the stuff that yep. they're facing in Oberon. Yep. Uh, I think uh, even Bertrand Wilson did all right, but uh, you know he spoke about some other things as well. Mm. But uh, look, I mean, if you can check out the symposium, please do so because um, they need help. It's important. Yeah, and we all need help. Yeah. But they they they're 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 the tip of the spear. And right share there. it. Share it. Yeah. Out. I mean, share this interview. Share that interview. Uh, sorry, share that symposium. Uh, come to the forum that we're going to have in Guildford, as I said, right within Chris Bowen's electorate of McMahon. Uh, if we can get a big crowd there, the venue can hold 500 people. We need a, a big crowd there. It's significant. We need to we need to start making some statements that people don't want this stuff. And yep. We need to start waking them up to this information. If we can put on information events, then bring along people that are awake that that, that, that don't want to listen. Drag them along. There was one guy in the audience at at, uh, at Doberon. He had to he had to crank his look on his face the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like he'd been dragged there against his will. But you know, the, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. <laughs> whatever it takes. All right, you wanted to promote the light newspaper as well. Um. Yeah, do you, should, we, should we do that? Okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Whoops, I just got rid of it. Oops. 
you, you provide a lot of bringing back. All right. So, uh, you know, one of the key things is how do we get the word out in a, in a, in a time of, of heavy censorship? You know, this is one of the problems that the newspapers, you know, the, the Washington Post, uh, a.k.a. the Langley Bugle is all inside the na- narrative, New York Times, CNN. So, you know, we what we need is uh, un- uncensored news covering the, the narratives, covering the stories that the, the narrative newspapers won't cover. So issue 13 is, is now out of the light newspaper. Uh, you know, I'm do, we're trying to do whatever we can to, to, to get, uh, awareness up for, for all the, all the things that are not covered by mainstream media. Um, so, uh, so I've done what I can to try to figure out how to, uh, get distribution up. Um, if you have the ability to distribute a few hundred in your local neighborhood, cafes, letterbox drops, hairdressers, um, you know, find a way to get in touch with me, mm-hmm. uh, and, um, uh, through the, through, through the podcast or what, however you want to do it. There's a phone number as well, right? Uh, yeah, there is somewhere if it's, yeah. um, if uh, it shows, okay. Yeah. Uh, 0406 oh, 861 Eight one six. Okay, yeah, that's my light phone, kind of like my back. The light phone. phone. Yeah, it's not my personal <laughs> phone, um, but it's my light phone. And send send me a text. Let me know where you are, uh, what you can take. We need both sponsors. Uh, if if you're willing to sponsor a half quarter, third of a pallet, I got uh, twenty six thousand copies into my garage yep. uh, last week, uh, and then getting it out to other people who can uh, help distribute. So. Um, yeah, please do what you can, uh, whether it just be, uh, distribute a uh, hundred or 200 in your local area or, or sponsor, uh, well, listeners of this, of this channel will be well aware of the censorship that can happen. Yeah. So we may get to a stage where this form of hard copy media is the only way of getting information out there. So mm-hmm. look, we need to get behind this. We need to get behind the light newspaper and other, uh, you know, maybe some other publications out there that you can find maybe like the spectator Australia or something like that, because, uh, because uh, we can't rely on social media anymore. It's not That's like right. when we were growing up and YouTube was, com- you could put whatever you wanted up there and it's not like that anymore. Do what you can. We're, we're counting on you. Yep. All right. Any uh, closing comments, Paul? I think you're no. spectacular as always. I know uh, people. Well, thank love you very much for the opportunity. I've enjoyed uh, the last weekend and this talk, and you know, more interesting times to come. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll keep at it. We'll keep pushing ahead. Uh, if you can share this uh, interview today. Uh, please do so. It is truly valuable that our uh, audience helps us by uh, sharing our information. And uh, as as I've said before, even if you have to strip it onto a VHS uh, videotape and put it in the mail and send it to someone, whatever it takes, <laughs> you just have to do it. So please, please, please share this far and wide. Subscribe if you haven't. Follow us on Rumble. Sign up to the newsletter on commandingthenarrative.com. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Thank you very much.